All right, this is ninth grade lit, and we're discussing revenge. Uh, you're probably not going to be able to see the board, um, but I'm going to be writing some things up on the board. Uh, so uh, give me a definition. Um, you're going to have to define one or both of these. We did define revenge yesterday. Give me a definition. Um, what is fair and righteous? Fairness or righteousness. The word just and right, or justice and righteousness, basically mean the same thing. Okay. Uh, Andrew, okay. Yeah. Sure. All right, Andrew, you're signing. Uh, all right, so anything that's just or right is, I mean, fair or right would be considered justice. Anything else? Uh, start start preparing this. Not uh, there is any particular. Yeah. Well, okay, uh, oh yeah, it's okay. I'm not going to jump in just because I that no. we just started the discussion. Or what? No. Yeah, you didn't miss anything. Okay. You heard it all. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the difference I feel like we talked about yesterday, like God being the divine, like judge of right from wrong and so only he can bring vengeance like true vengeance in the form of like justice so like just vengeance um but we as humans have some power to determine right from wrong and we can bring justice on those who are or, or like who have been unre like not god because you know he's the only one who can make those just calls but we know more or less right from wrong in those situations so we can make just calls. So why don't we start here? Because that's, you, you just said the, uh, the essence of this verse. Anybody have this in front of you right now? Uh, like uh, James got it. Let her show me this one. And... He has shown you only O mortal what is good and what is what is heaven required you. That is just the case of one verse you can walk away from what is good to God. So notice um, he uses word required. Revenge is prohibited, not allowed. Justice is required. It couldn't be more opposite. One you can never do, and one you should always do. So if you are, if you are uh, seeking for justice or working for justice, wonder what that would look like. Well, let's look at the rest of the verses and see what the, the Bible has to say about that. Um, notice it says, um, this is a, probably the most famous statement about justice in the world. Uh, do justly, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. So justice, mercy, and humility are all important characteristics there. So for like the essay and paper, um, are we going to have to write word out, like word for word, the verse? Yes, but you're not going to have to do too many of them. Okay, get, I'm but it'll you, be the verses that we've written that's on. Right. That's right. That's right. Um, so let's go back to, to Exodus 23, 2, and um, why don't we go to, John, you got it, John Carter, you got it? Got Exodus 23, uh, uh, All right, how about, Brady, you got it? Yeah. You must not follow a crowd in wrongdoing, do not testify in a lawsuit, and go along with the crowd to, to preserve justice. I'm going to go this way. Uh, what's key about that? So, if something always should be suspicious in you about following the crowd, I don't mean you're going to a ball game and you're following people. You know what I mean. Whatever people are all for or against, that should immediately give you pause. Hmm. If everybody thinks this is a good thing, maybe I should examine it because it might not be a good thing. So that's just kind of one thing. Be careful about following the crowd. It generally the statement suggest you shouldn't do it. It usually suggests something bad that you don't want to go along with. Um, 
But the rest of that was don't pervert justice. So what does the word pervert mean? When you pervert something, what do you do? You make it your own. Like make it bad. Okay, so you corrupt it, you change it somehow. You use something, you know, almost everything on earth and every activity on earth is good, but it's also been perverted. So every good thing can be perverted and made into a bad thing. And every bad thing, that if, if you've done it the right way, um, could be a good thing. Uh, you notice that's how medicine can kill and it can heal? Mm -hmm. I mean, medicine is a perfect example. It'll kill you if you take too much of it or the wrong stuff, but it'll cure you if you take the right stuff the right way. Um, and that's, that's a strange thing. It does take wisdom to be able to discern between what's right sometimes because yeah, in some situations this would be a right thing to do. But anyway, how about Exodus 26, I mean 23, 6. Uh, have you got that, Leah? Um, Exodus 23, 6. You put 26, you put 26, 3 up there. Well, what did you get, really? That's right. Okay. That's 23, 6. So you, you wrote the right one. Just tell me what it meant. Oh, um, this means, like, you shouldn't show, like, poor judgment um, and, like, God's dispute or whatever. And, like, it's talking, well, that was just what I wrote down. Okay. Did you quote it? Do you have the exact verse there? shall not pervert the judgment of your poor and your deceit. So what group of people does that verse speak to? Well, in the verse, what, what word? You. Well, the uh, poor. Christians? Poor, right? Do not pervert justice for the oh. poor. Is that what it says? So there are four groups of people that God has a heart for. And one is poor people. What Jesus say about poor people? They will always be with us. So anybody that tells you we got to eliminate poverty, I mean, we should try, but we'll never succeed. It's just the way it is because uh, there's always going to be injustice, and there's always going to be things that cause people to be poor. Does that mean you shouldn't try? No, of course you should try. We should try to make to eliminate it, but it's always going to be there. Unfortunately, because this is a fallen world. Yes. By poor, does it mean people who are just don't have that much money, or do they mean people who are like discriminated against? No, we're talking about well, in the in the the Bible, it was people that were literally poor. I don't know what comes to mind when you think about it today. Um, so, do not deny justice to this group of people. Uh, Deuteronomy sixteen nineteen is interesting. Too. You got that, Jeff? No, I don't have it. How about it here? Um, what, what, 16? 16, Deuteronomy 16, 19. Deuteronomy 16, 19. Um, okay. You shall not pervert justice, you shall not show partiality, and you shall not bri accept a bribe. For a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and subverts the cause of the righteous. What's a bribe? So you're paying somebody to do, in the area of justice, you pay somebody when you buy something, and see, that's good. That's, that's, that's a fine thing. But when you're paying a judge to get you off, or paying somebody to lie for you, um, bribes are not good. And in some cultures, not cultures, in some countries, the corrupt ones that have corrupt government, I mean, if you go to the country, and you know, in order to get anything done, I gotta, I gotta dish out a lot of money. I gotta pay people to get this done. Um, Anyway, what is partiality? Alex, being biased. Okay, what does that mean? Like having taking a side. So, I guess well, an example would be um, like I'm not trying to be political, but like a presidential election, like there's two sides, and like you you choose one side or the other. So I guess it's like, well, so don't do that all the time. Yeah, yeah no, like taking, taking a like taking a judge side. taking it's a side. It's a personal. It's based on yeah. your personal experience, like. 
say like a personal bias, meaning like it's your own. Like no, if someone has like someone in power yeah. is taking it inside. No, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody has has the ability to influence oh, something. Yeah. Yeah, like and they have, have to say the stranger or your best friend, you're going to choose right. your best friend. Exactly. Well, you're going to say, oh, I'll just show you what I'm doing. But the image. Okay. Um, so that's a, that would be a bad thing, particularly in the area of justice. A judge, somebody that. Oh, by the way, you ever seen the picture of justice? Like most yeah. courtrooms have a have a statue. The woman with the scale. Like she's a woman. You got a scale. Lady and justice. She has a scale for something. Okay, let's look at the scale. What? Why? What's the scale? Fairness. It's like fairness. Like the equality. Yeah, the scale is all raised like balance. balance. So what makes it? Well, not always when you use oh, yeah, it. What? What? Hard. What happens when you use it? Goes on one way or the other. So, right. So, in the terms of justice, what kinds of things go on the scale? Like, like we're trying to decide who's right and who's wrong in a situation. Do you take out like the pros and cons of it, kind of, or like the like? Maybe you put them in. Maybe you put the pros and cons. And oh, it's right. it's wow! Explain. Like, it's <laughs> so what, what, what sort of thing? What sort of things happen in the courtroom, for instance, that determine who, or should determine who wins or loses the case? Like just that. Like but what does he use? The jury. Evidence. 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 The jury. Exactly. The evidence. The jury or the judge. They use that. So they are here. These scales, and they're putting the evidence on. And if the evidence leans toward the right, that guy wins. If the evidence leans toward the left, that guy wins. Um, but there's one more thing about the woman's, the, the, the picture of the justice. Yes. I think she's got the Greek elements. She may be. But what we said, she's got, she got, I think she's got she's a sword in her hand. She got so. scales. She's wearing a robe. Uh, but what else? Doesn't she have a crown or like a... Um, well, she's got something on her head. A halo. Oh. It's actually more on her face. I think that's a little. A veil. No, I don't know. She's blindfolded. Uh -oh. Oh. All right, 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 right. Oh, so that okay, means she won't be, like, partial. She won't be partial, yeah. So the, the justice should be blindfolded. If you don't, okay, I'm going to figure out, are you rich? Are you, you know, important? I'll, I'll vote for you, or in this case, I'll judge in your favor. Or, like, oh. I like how they look better. Exactly. It could be anything, but it shouldn't be anything. And so the justice should be blind, and you only go with the evidence, um, and that's what partiality is, or impartiality is. You should not be partial. Um, how about Deuteronomy 27, 19? Get that one, um, Orion. Oh, okay, which one is it? 27, 19, Deut Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, okay. First be he that preventeth the judgment of a stranger, fatherless, and widow. So what three groups are mentioned there? A stranger, the fatherless, and the widows. A stranger. Father. I'm going to put orphan. You can still have mother and be fatherless, but I'm, I think the idea there would be particularly, you know, women did not have a lot of prestige in those days, so having a mother without a father was a, was a it, it, it could be difficult. Because she couldn't make money. She didn't have a husband. But So anyway, I'll put orphan, but you get the idea. Widow. So look at the four groups. These, this, why are these four groups singled out by God and the Old Testament? Is We should particularly be concerned about their justice. Alex. Because in, the Bible, like in that time, they were like the people who nobody cared about. So I guess the Bible... They're the ones that we actually need to focus on more than the people who can sever one thing. They're the people that get treated most in, unjustly because they don't have any clout, any power, any money to defend themselves. And so this is true today. And we should be, as Christians, we should be concerned about any of these groups of people. The most, and there are tons of other groups you probably put in there. People that are vulnerable to injustice. That should be our concern. Um,
I didn't put this one up there. I think I'm going to. Job 8, 3. I think it's got some value here for this discussion. Did you have that one, Zach? Job 8, 3. Um, yes, we did. Yeah. Oh, oh, you're asking him. Well, I got it. Um, for the Lord is righteous. He loves righteous deeds. The upright shall behold his face. Um, Job 8, 3. Oh, uh, does God prefer justice or does the Almighty prefer to right? So what do you learn there about justice? Um, I, su I assume that um, the Almighty means like kings or rulers or something. And it's a, it's a rhetorical question. Uh, yeah. Does God, of course the answer is no. So if you ever blame God for something, blame him. You can't do that. It, it's not possible. God never does anything um, that's unjust, unrighteous, wrong. So you can kind of mark that out of your system. Okay, I'll never, I, if I ever tell, and of course we did, we talked about it yesterday. Somebody in another class mentioned their child was killed. It was, it was, and she, she blamed God. But she changed. She got over it. So when something like that happens, you can imagine your first reaction is, you know, blame God for it. It's it's he didn't do it. Um, but you know, that's kind of a natural thing and then you you, you learn that you, know, you get over it. That's what people do when they mourn. But just keep that in your mind. God also um, let me look at how about uh, uh, Psalm eleven seven. Psalm 11.7. Um, I just said, like, an excerpt almost. So he loves justice. Those who do, the, those who do what is right will see his face. What do you learn from that? Um, so I said, um, those who are just are of God, or like the, the ones who are just and stand up especially for like the outcast will see God um, meaning like that whole eternal life thing it, like comes into play because it's saying like uh, it's almost like one of the Beatitudes where it says like, you know, I know like, your earth or yeah, but it says you know, if you're just you will see his face um, and then You know, we talk about when you see God, we won't see him with our eyes in this world, but where do you see him? Well, be just. It's, it's, the promise is that you'll see God. I don't, I don't really know. I think that means you'll be closer to God. I like this part. God loves justice. So if you've ever been treated unjustly, know that God's not happy about that. He loves justice. Um, uh, Ms. Liebman's husband. Did you ever know Ms. Mr. George Liebman? Did you ever ever meet him? He died about three or four years ago. He used to teach here, and something that had happened in, in our family that was unjust. And the, the, the next day when I showed up, he, I, he knew about it. He looked at me and said, God loves justice. He quoted that verse. And that meant a lot to me because there was no, there was no possibility to get revenge. Uh, even if you didn't, I mean, just it was impossible. And um, even though, even if I didn't know God prohibited it, but the fact that God loves justice, whenever you, if ever you're mistreated, know that God is not for that. He doesn't like that. He doesn't like His children to be mistreated. Um, what about Psalm 106, Alex? Psalm 106. Oh. Oh, I had Psalm 36, 76. Oh, my bad. Um, I had that mainly um, that the poor and the outcast will be um, blessed. Like, kind of like another, like, beatitude, like, six, like similar to that, but, like, the poor and the outcast will be blessed. So, it, yeah, it goes along. But the idea, you want to be blessed? People say, do you, have you ever anybody say, have a blessed day? Yes. I really like that. I want to have a blessed day. Well, one way to have a blessed day is to love justice. 
maintain justice, work for justice. Well, it, it also says, like, happy are those who deal justly with others. There you go. So, like, you're happy if you're yes. just, you know? It's a good feeling. And happiness is a lost thing in our society these days. Yeah, so people like, try in all sorts of ways to. Very good. It makes you happy to be just, to actually do something that's just, to help somebody. Um, oh yeah, Amos 20, uh, 524. Uh, you notice how it's getting darker earlier tonight? It's you making know? me so sad. I don't like it. What? It makes me so sad because like, I don't know why, but whenever it's not outside, it's like, well, you know what's going to happen in at least around Halloween. Yeah. It's going to get darker a whole lot earlier. Because yeah. yeah. they're going to turn darker. the clocks back to normal. Yeah. So right now. Don't we lose an hour? Uh, we fall back. We turn them back. <laughs> yeah, forget what I just said. We turn them back. I don't back. understand why they do that. I never understood the concept. It was, I think it's they because, had to do with it was farming. because of farming. Yeah. yeah exactly. Because they're like they need more time. This was like back when like, we were in the summer, they need more time to harvest the crops. Yeah. So they turn all the clocks back. So, so we lose our sleep. They turn them ahead in spring. That's the way the summer rolls. We were like much more active. So that's directly like that one. Yeah, yeah. 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 you turn them ahead in spring. Yeah. 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 In the summer, it could be 9 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, you have to work in it. But now, by this time, they harvested the crop. So, I mean. Now we have like these big machines that can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like half So I actually asked my mom. Why, why don't we just stop it? She said, go uh, send a, a letter to the president and tell him to fix that. Well, you know what they're thinking? They're actually thinking of making it yeah. all year long. Yeah. So I don't know. Oh, all year long. Year long. What, right now, yeah, the we never turn it back. We just leave it like the way it is now. So it always get darker? Yeah, um, so it's going to get darker. Like like there. There. Our feet aren't yeah, right yeah. Um, Who made that This studio? is what it's going to look like at 2 no, o'clock. Who did it? It was just before. Is this only in the USA? No, everywhere. Worldwide. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, yeah. Yeah. so we're going to have like a whole United States talk just to make sure that yeah. our yeah. is yeah. 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 Right now, it's three o'clock. Technically, it would be four o'clock. I don't like that. Because I have like less time. Then, like, what is it? Well, we're going to turn the clocks back. So it'll be two o'clock. This is what two o'clock looks like. Oh my gosh! I'm so scared. So, so it gets it dark now at six o'clock. So it's gonna be dark at five o'clock. Oh, oh. Okay. 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 All right. Sorry about that. I just like that. I just like that. Let's yeah. Okay. Uh, Flora's gonna read. We just got two more. Maybe two more things. Uh, Flora is uh, famous. So let justice roll along like a river, righteous like a never failing. And what else? Did you know that moving water is one of the most powerful forces on earth? That yes. You can't stop it. So what does yeah. that tell you about justice? You can't stop it. Can't. It's powerful. It's very powerful. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, um, and this is uh, Psalm 37, 6. <laughs> Uh, one last one, and then we'll, we'll finish this and uh, tell you what to do on Friday. Okay. 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 It mentions noon. My version talked about the noonday sun. Yeah. Did you say? Sun. What does that tell you about justice? That it's like dawn. That it will like it will like dawn. You will find justice eventually. So dawn will always like how like it always comes. So justice. That was that's kind of what Hulk was saying. Oh, I like that. Like the new day, it's going to come. It's Plus, I like the fact that it's public. I think that justice should be public. You know, when some when the right thing happens, that's when we should not for our benefit, but just for in general people need to know they can trust. All right, let me tell you what we're gonna do Friday. I'm gonna give you a writing assignment that 
I'm not telling you exactly. It could be right about both revenge of justice, one or the other. Is it your option? That's a good thing. No, because it's no, but it's all right. Wait, we're every single week. Wait, we're but it's just tests and we don't get material. No, yeah. I have two questions. Yeah. So, Martha, since A is required justice, that's right. So, what is my answer? Can you check if we write about justice or revenge? Yeah, that's one option that I have. I could give you the option to write about both of them or one or the other. Uh, you're talking about maybe five paragraphs? Okay. Okay. Front and maybe like Both. maybe two pages or just oh, yeah. a page and a half. Yeah, you only have 40 minutes. Uh, like five paragraphs. I can't hear you. Go ahead. Say that again. How many examples do we need to have? Um, well, let me let me finish what I was going to say. What were you going to ask? Oh, I was just going to ask. Um, so, is this something that we're going to have to like study for? And it, yeah, I mean, I definitely look it over to so save you some time. Yeah, you're gonna have your notes, but you. Because you. Yeah, because you you're limited with time, and if you're spending all your time looking for the answer, you're not writing. Let me go back to this though. You're gonna write about justice or, or revenge or both. You're gonna have to define it, so make sure you have a definition of each one of them. You're gonna have to. I would. One thing you could do is select the verses that you like ahead of time. I'm not gonna ask you to use seven or eight. I'm asking you to use say three or four per, but but that you know well and that you can talk about. Do we have to write it out, or can we just say like? That's a good point. Um, yeah, um, that's a good point. It does save time if you maybe if you quoted part of it. That's a good thing. But the third thing I want you to do, and we can do this right now. Find examples, let's, let's do both. Find examples in Beowulf that are clearly revenge. Right, give me some examples. That are, mom. That's mom. number one. Anything oh, else? Oh, Beowulf attacking the dragon because he attacked um, a nearby that, place. That could be, and, and, and you could argue either way. You could argue that it's, it's justice, but you've got to make an argument. You've got to be, have a convincing argument. Was the Frisian slaughter revenge? Definitely. Oh, when, because, the, yeah. when the other nations, you, well, this didn't happen, but Wiglock was explaining that the other nations would come The Swedes to are going to get revenge. Yeah. Exactly. Very good. Anything else? Wait. What about when Beowulf cut off Grendel's body? He's already dead. His head. Um, Is that really revenge? I don't know. What, what, that's I don't a, like Beowulf's story. Well, that could be revenge. Um, what about Grendel? And you mentioned Grendel's mother. All right, um, what's some examples of justice in that book? I feel like you could argue um, putting, putting Grindel's arm up as just like as one of the, I don't know what it was. So the noon like day. It, that's a really good point. Showing it in front of I like that. Yeah. I hadn't thought of that. So yeah, that's a real good point. That's, uh, yeah. Maybe like when he killed the dragon. I mean, I mean, it's not both of the legs, but. Well, you argue one way or the other. Argue that it's just that he did that. Tell me. Oh, now? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, that's a great question. Um, uh, I'd probably say, like, well, I mean, and I think I'd probably have more revenge because he's just trying to get back at him. Would somebody argue that killing the dragon was the just thing to do? Um, I don't know. Because he was going to kill people. So he prevented more people being killed. He prevented more people. That, that's a good argument. So um, it was basically righteous vengeance. I Except I'm not going to let you get out that easy. Uh, you need to say one or the other. Just for the sake of argument. You're going to have to pick one of those. I might not both sides. Well, just, like, just pick, um, pick a side and argue. Yeah. That's, you know, well, either way. Can you explain why that is justice or revenge? On your, uh, what? Can you explain why that is justice? Or revenge, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think one really good example is killing, Bill was killing Grendel. Because Grendel was coming every night hurting the dame. So here's a guy who doesn't know Grendel. It's not personal. He comes over and he prevents more Danes being killed. That's to me what justice always does. Um, so that's a good example. It takes care of people who couldn't defend themselves. Um, this is a little bit off what you're saying. It's about trying to figure out. Yeah. We just, we just watched the video in writing, and they talked about the Danes actually being like Vikings. So is, is that true? 
Well, it, I, I know that's where they're from. Yeah. So, yeah. So they split it into, like, into the English and then the, and then the Vikings and friends do it. So I didn't know. That's cool. I didn't know that. But the, I know that's where the, the Vikings are from, that whole area. All right. Any last questions? We still have tomorrow, but I want to give you notes tomorrow for the new book. So we'll start off at answering questions. And then Friday you come in and write. So tomorrow be prepared just to take some notes. I think in the morning. What are the arguments are reading here?